welcome everyone to the November 21st City Council work session. We are first going to go into executive session pursuant to ORS 192-6602E. Representatives of the news media and designated staff shall be allowed to attend the executive session. All other members of the public are not permitted to attend. We'll try to be quick. <laughs> You'll tell me when we're ready? We're good now? Okay.
January of 07. Mm. I had the gold. That wow. Was the call. <laughs> You're a newbie into the conversation. <laughs> I'll refrain from comment at this time. That, and it was before that, actually. Yeah, I yeah, know. Forever, forever, huh? You're back in now. Okay, we're back in. So welcome back, everyone, to our uh, work session, city manager. I'll turn it uh, over to Sarah. Turn it back over to Sarah. All right, so uh, tonight what we had hoped to do was have a really um, kind of long, thorough meeting about your options and decisions ahead of you about City Hall. Uh, what we had anticipated would happen and what we had planned on happening was that we would have all of our information back from the consultants on the three scenarios. You would have had a JEO. We had thought initially we might have a um, legal determination on the butterfly lot. And, um, and then we had some kind of late information coming in about e-waste as a potential uh, fourth scenario for you to look at. So uh, our intent was that we would take all of that information and kind of hash through it tonight in a really long session until you could get to a preferred scenario or scenarios. As you know, um, not all of those things happen. And so what we want to do tonight is still have a, a really good conversation about City Hall and some of the scenarios. We want to walk through um, we want to walk through some of the decision making you're going to make, some of the meeting timelines. Uh, we want to do a just kind of high level overview of all the scenarios and some of the things that we're learning. And then we really need you to um, have kind of a focused discussion on three main areas. And I have them up here. Uh, the first one that we'll ask you to talk about is around the rebid timeline and how you want to <coughs> proceed with that for phase one in its current location. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, the project values that we want to incorporate into the eWeb analysis. And then we want to talk about phase two and considerations that you may or may want um, more or less information on. And then I put down here uh, a fourth kind of item that has nothing to do uh, except with the timing of City Hall and the meetings. And that is, if you have time at the end of the meeting, there's been a couple of things that have kind of been emerging issues that we need to resolve on your calendar. One of them has to do with recreational marijuana and whether you want to do some time, place, manner restrictions. And, and Glenn can kind of give you an overview of if you want to do that, what we would need to do and, and when. And then the second was that you uh, received a request from the CSEN around delaying the December 14th South Willamette uh, work session. And so we have some time on the, on the end to talk about that because as you'll see, uh, as I go through the timeline, it may, <coughs> may really relate to whether you, um, how you make this kind of decision on City Hall. So uh, the, on the left-hand side we have today, so I, I'm kind of, we're showing, Christy and I are going to co-present this, we're showing kind of your individual work sessions. So tonight we have two different work sessions. They're, they're all on City Hall scenarios. Uh, we'll be coming back on the 5th. We're just kind of locking in the JEO meeting that will be at 530 to talk about the coordinated development scenarios of A, B, and C. And then we're considering, and our intent will be to add a 7 o'clock meeting item that same night. I know that's a long night for you guys to jump into the eWeb piece and really go into detail on that. That's an option. If we can't do it that night, we'll need to find another night. We were just thinking that could be an option to get all of it uh, in one setting. Then uh, the ones that are kind of in gray are not scheduled yet, but there is 12-12. Uh, um, there's a possibility that if you need more information or if we need to move that eWeb session, we could look for a way to fit that in either to your 5.30 or 7 o'clock time. And then 12.14, if you take action, if somebody uh, introduces a motion, we have one. I, I didn't think you'd do it tonight because you usually like to give each other advance notice. But if you wanted to move to postpone the South Willamette discussion to January, we could use that last 12.14 session to kind of lock in on a preferred scenario or preferred scenarios for us to move forward with. So that's kind of the, um, and somewhere in there, our hope is that someplace in there between 12.5, hopefully, and 12.12, we'll get a, a ruling on the legal restrictions of the butterfly lot. Or is this enough information for you? Yeah. Do you know which one of these buttons is the pointer so when I get to that point, I don't have to turn around? Okay. Red one. So 
the rocket. Okay. I was afraid that would turn it off. All right. So tonight, uh, the first thing we're going to do is walk through at a really high level the four scenarios. And even though there's four scenarios, they're really focused on, on these three sites. This is why I wanted the pointer. So as you know, we're talking about a scenario that shows us in two different ways at the uh, existing city hall site. We have a scenario that shows us at the butterfly lot site. And then we have a scenario of the eWeb site. And as you know, as we've been talking about these, and the his, this has been considered kind of the heart or the core of downtown, the historic center, others will talk about this being, the river being kind of the heart of the community. So um, the reason that we have those lines out there is as we were talking about parking scenarios, we talked about everything being within a quarter mile, being a reasonable distance that people would walk. So we've been kind of evaluating all of these sites on that, on that radius. So the first scenario is um, a little bit of what I would call our modified as is scenario. So as you recall, your, uh, as we were going out to bid, we had City Hall phase one in this current location as we're shown here. And we had phase two showing as just a quarter block behind that phase one because we had, uh, you had modified the plan to allow for a courthouse on the second half of your block. Uh, as we learned, and as you know, we discovered that the courthouse probably had more needs than that space would allow. And so as, as is scenario really is to show if we go forward with our land and they go forward with their land, what are possible? And as we've learned from this, that um, what we've learned is possible is totally feasible and, and pretty certain that we can build phase one on our site. It's completely feasible and there's certainty that you own that site and you could do a phase two when the funds were available. Um, what we also know is certain here is that if the courthouse builds on the butterfly lot, that probably means that the farmer's market won't stay in the, in the heart of downtown. And that's, that's been, they've said all along, this is not their preferred scenario. So we feel like it's something that we're, we're really starting to learn about this scenario. Um, the second scenario is our shared city hall and courthouse site. Uh, when we shifted from the half block to three quarters of a block, it helps um, some in the scaling as it shows it's feasible to do a phase one city hall on that site in the current location. It's feasible to put a courthouse there, step back from the building a little bit. And what we're, show what we're learning is that it's also technically, physically feasible to put uh, the phase hall, phase two services that you've identified, which is municipal court, planning and development, public works, you know, HR, information services, all of the 135,000 square feet are actually uh, technically and feasibly able to be put here. Um, and what we know about this scenario is that it starts to um, reopen up that fourth park block, uh, keeping a legacy location for the farmer's market and also creates future development opportunities for um, whatever we didn't identify what that use was. <laughs> And then the scenario C that we've been looking at, um, similarly, it's uh, physically possible to locate a phase one city hall on the north end of the park block. And as you recall, when we started looking at uh, what we would do with phase two, some of our early learnings, and you'll, we'll hear more about this in the JEO meeting, um, was that it was looking like it would be more expensive to renovate a phase two City Hall or renovate the courthouse building and it still wouldn't accommodate all of the uses. And so what we're, we've been working towards is could we physically put the 135,000 square feet there? And it's, we're learning it's technically feasible to do that. In this scenario, it also provides a lot more uh, flexibility for the courthouse because they would have um, a full block to help with their multiple services. So then we're going to make a, a shift over to um, eWeb, and this is something you haven't really heard a lot about yet. But as we looked at this, um, we've been looking at what we're calling the headquarters site. This piece of the property is not part of our negotiations around the eWeb site. This is what they've withheld for the headquarters, and so that's what we used as our assumption, our base case scenario of where we would build um, City Hall. Which is Sorry. Lo locate. Again. Sorry. Show that again. Show which piece again? Is it the red, the, the 
red. Everything yes, red. so this is just the outline. So this is, as you can see, this is the north building, and this is the south building. This is the, uh, the water fountain area. Includes the parking as it goes underneath the viaduct and a little bit of this park piece up here. And that's, that's what Eva delineated as the admin property? Yeah, that's the piece. That's, and there might be actually more, but this is what we call the headquarter site. We or they? We. This is our, um, based on the documents that we're working on, this is what we gave to the consultant team to consider as the site. But we didn't ask about the whole property. I'm not following your question. This so, is yes, I, I, can, I think I'm following. So, I guess what I would say is that we are negotiating, we are currently negotiating a land sale of the e website for everything except for this piece. So when you talked about could we locate City Hall at the headquarters site, we are, we just under the assumptions of this, and you can modify this assumption, we are, mod we are identifying the headquarters site as that site and that we wouldn't use the whole site just for the purposes of the analysis so you could look at kind of an apples to apple orange. Remind people that we're running this like a regular work session, so please get in the yeah. queue. All right, so um, I took a drink because this will take a little bit of explaining. So as you can see, as you recall, um, in all of our earlier work, we are showing City Hall phase one, which is the initial phase in yellow, and we're showing all the other services in this kind of spring green. That's how we used to modify and differentiate. When you move to eWeb, it's a little bit of a different uh, situation because the building is larger, so the existing north building, which is this one, and the existing south building together have more than what your current phase one program is, but we thought for the purposes of uh, looking at the information and having something to compare it to, we would try to provide similar graphics across both. So as you can see, the city hall uh, the North eWeb building right here is um, 14,350 square feet and you're, so we're showing the phase one program would include the North building and would also include kind of this first floor, portion of the first floor. Then what this lighter green color is, is kind of the rest of the first, second and third floor that I'm calling phase one plus because you wouldn't go in and renovate this and a portion of a building you would renovate all of it at one time so we were just trying to show hey you get this program you get this much of your phase two program and then sometime in a distant out year probably eight years or beyond you could pick up the fourth floor of phase as part of your next phase two and to complete the total package that you're representing in the other scenarios you would have to build an additional building and uh, this is where it's just a uh, for purposes of analysis, we said keep it on the headquarters site. Don't make a judgment about whether it's better fit over here or over here. We're just trying to determine is it feasible, and it's feasible. Does that make sense so far? So this is um, combined between, so this between all of these, we're at about 86,000 square feet, and then you pick up the other um, 11 something in the when the fourth floor moves out of the U.S. We're going to talk in more detail about this later. I just wanted to tell you this is what we're kind of evaluating. So um, as we started down this path, you know, as we started, we had kind of our city hall block. We were going to build phase one and had space for phase two, and we had half the block for potentially a future courthouse or another development. Uh, these scenarios on the left indicate where you and the um, county commissioners directed us to do some work. So phase one, scenario A, I, I'm putting these slides up here in a little bit of a green yellow of certainty and where we might need clarity. Like this one is pretty clear. We know where it is, we own the land, we have a definite phase two land bank and it's clear and it's, it's pretty certain. Uh, phase one, co-locating with the courthouse. This is actually supposed to be spring green because we know that it's technically feasible. We own the land, but we also know that there's some uh, probably um, 
more issues that we will need to talk through and work through in terms of how you co-locate, how you would co-locate a city hall and the values that you want for a city hall and a courthouse and the values you want for a courthouse and how some of the uses um, can complement each other and may also conflict. And so we know there's, it's a little bit less certain. We need a little bit more clarity about that. Um, and we have some certainty on phase two being, uh, phase two land bank essentially being right there at the 8th and Pearl site. We know that that works to, if you want to put all of the services in one building, it could work in that location. Uh, phase one at the butterfly lot, both this and phase two are, are yellow under that scenario you directed us because we have, um, we know it technically feasibly works, but we have a lot more to learn about um, whether it's legal to build on the butterfly lot, what, how we, what deal we would negotiate, how we would work through that. And then also with phase two, similar kinds of questions. And you also introduce in the timing. It's uncertain when the courthouse will move out. So there's a little bit of uncertainty there. It's, it's technically feasible. It's just a yellow. Um, I drew a line from this one back up to phase two because you do have, always have this phase two certainty at 8th and Pearl um, that could go with that option. And then phase one at eWeb is just yellow because we have more questions and um, that's part of what we're going to do tonight is talk about how you want us to proceed forward with the analysis of eWeb given, um, because without your direction, we're kind of proceeding with some of the values associated with this and I'm not certain that that's how you want us to proceed. So we think we need to talk about that. So with that, do you want me to just keep going? Yeah. Do you want to pick well, this no, up? No, I'm happy to pick okay. it up. Um, so as Sarah mentioned, and it's kind of illustrated by the mm -hmm. previous uh, chart that she shared, is that there are a lot of decisions that are considerations that need to be taken into account to help you all make a well-informed decision. And when we started down the path of um, looking at alternative options, one of the things that you wanted considered was to preserve your option to rebid this project in the winter of 2017. And given where we are and the um, information that's um, still outstanding in terms of legal decisions, full suite of information around all of the different options and the costing um, being scheduled, uh, one of the things that we'd like to ask you tonight is, given the range of options and decisions, does council want to proceed with or postpone preparation of bid documents for this winter? And there's a couple of sub items down there. If yes, to proceed with rebid, move to direct the city manager to proceed with preparation of phase one construction documents for an early 2017 rebidding of the project. If yes to postpone, move to direct the city manager to postpone preparation of phase one construction documents until phase one site has been affirmed by council. So I don't know, um, Mayor, if you'd like us to go through all of these or you want to. Well, let's do it one at a time. Okay. okay. And let's just, we'll go around the table and hear from everybody and then we'll see where we are. So Chris, why don't you start? Um, yeah, I think uh, considering the, the cost and effort that would go into putting together a bid on a phase we're not confirmed yet it wouldn't seem like a prudent thing to do. So um, reluctantly, I would support postponing the bid till we're certain on where phase one's going to be built. Eddie? Uh, I think we should become certain soon enough to go out for bids in January. I don't know. We've been <clears throat> fooling with this for a long time now. And the longer it goes on, the more people, people will, who don't know anything, haven't thought about it at all will suddenly say well if you can save money let's do this but it isn't just saving money and we don't know that we can save money we don't know what may come up but we should decide what by now we should be able to decide what we think is best and I understand that we will know about the butterfly lot soon at least the judge told assured me that it wouldn't take years that it would take a short time and I think that we should make up our minds and then you, we were told before the bid it gets more expensive the longer you wait. So you wait another year, probably costs more. And I think we are, should be wet, ready to make a decision. So Thank I you. want to ask a question before I go to Mike. So let's say council makes a decision on schedule. Mm -hmm. How does that fit <clears throat> into when 
the bid could be made. If you make a decision on <coughs> sometime between now and um, really early December to proceed with, I mean, it's really, you're, like you're really right up against the, mm -hmm. the time limit right now, but you would have to choose very certain pretty quickly that you want to proceed forward with phase one in its current current site at scenario A. And going back to Betty, what Betty said is neither one nor two, I think, is what you said, right? <laughs> Betty, you would like it if they moved faster. Right? Yes, we can we should know by early December whether we can use the butterfly lot, right? That's our understanding, yes. Okay. I, it wouldn't have to be the current site. We we should be able to decide how long are we going to talk about it? That is, I'm just trying to understand where you were landing on oh, this. I, I say we should decide which one and go out for bids in early 17. Things are only going to get worse, and people are going to wonder what is going on. People say, well, when are you going to have a city hall? Maybe never. Mike. Thank you, Mayor. I, I um, understand. Betty's desire to move along. I personally would not want to see us rebuild <coughs> if that decision is today. I would say postpone. Um, I think that's what I heard Betty say because what we're asking is simply on the current site, right? Mm -hmm. Shall we today decide to go out no. and rebid on the current site? Yes. So no. that's, that's the what question. the question that's is. That's the question. Right. Okay. It could be either one. Well, nope, the specific question with this is in reference to the project that. that you have information on and where we delayed and looked at the option of rebidding in February or okay. February or But we, can't we do that if we decide on the other site? It would have to be very, very quick. Or if the, the other site? No. The there would have to be additional work to, done, to be yeah, done. You couldn't get it done. redesign the yeah. plan. Yeah. The only site that can have a, a, a make a quick decision to rebid is the current site <coughs> that moves the farmer's market. Right. Butterfly lot controls the whole process. Yeah. All other design. That's later. We can only rebid if we choose A. I, I would not want us to rebid at this time. I want to reserve that option to no. do that at a future point. I, and, um, but I, I, I don't believe that's the wise course right now. George? Um, yeah, we should not. I don't think we should rebid right now. We, we still have that option. That we may land on that site, but we don't we don't know yet. We we're, our intentions are not clear yet, and I, <coughs> um, you know, we it, we could rebuild later in the winter. We could rebuild in in uh, springtime for fall, fall of 2017 started construction. So that kind of all depends on the construction climate. I mean, there's a lot of other projects going to be going on. We don't know that yet, but but first of all, we need to decide where we want to do phase one and we're not we're not there yet we there's still other information I think that we need we need to learn and we'll learn more tonight I know about the e website and um, I think that we I don't know I think we need a finer grained uh, analysis of the fe feasibility of, of uh, remodeling and remediating the, the courthouse the county courthouse that's that's one option is to remodel that building um, ultimately, that may not be feasible, but um, so we hopefully we'll have. Is that in the works? Has, has there been any um, anyone looking at that to see if it's even feasible and how much it might cost to remediate and remodel? That's an important. I mean, that's one of our options. So that's something that we need to know. Someone has to do that work and bring us back. You know, well, yes, it could be done, but it's going to cost, you know, $20 million or no, there's so much environmental problems that it's going to be $30 million or we don't know what the answer would be. It could be, yes, it's eminently feasible. It should cost 10 to $15 million. So, you know, until we know, I think that's an important piece. It is one of the options. So we, we I know everyone wants to, we all want to see it go we want to get it done but there's still we still need some more information i think before we make a, a, a really good decision yep. but yes i i say we we 
it's pretty clear that we need to postpone the bid. And, and I think uh, uh, Councilor Zelenka is absolutely right. Uh, with the uncertainty in the background here, people are not going to spend a lot of time submitting bids because it could fall apart and then they've wasted all that time. So, But the, the reason for postponing, thank you. Yeah, I think um, I was just going to clarify that our early analysis was looking at whether or not what the cost would be of renovating the courthouse. That was one of the sites, that, that was one of the options that was on the table. That's also one of the options you took off the table. The direction that we have from this group was to put the full phase two new construction um, on that site. However, because we did some of the early work and we know that people have questions and curiosity about what the cost of renovating that is, we have asked them to continue to do a little bit of work. So we'll be able to uh, speak at the JEO about, hopefully just at a really high level about what some of those costs are and why, why you can quickly get above a you know square footage cost by the time you have to kind of gut a building, abate it, do the seismic, update the systems. Mm -hmm. um, it, it quickly escalated. So we haven't done a thorough cost analysis of that. Okay, thank you. I'd forgotten that. And I, I was just looking at the, the green, big green Lego block here and not yeah. looking at the yeah. fine print that right. said new <laughs> City Hall. Yeah. Thing. So before I go on here, I just wanted to add that the job we have at hand right now, I think the upshot of the conversation as, as it has transpired thus far is that you can, all of these are kind of feasible. <laughs> and um, and uh, phase two is feasible in each of these, but you're only looking right now at where you want to put phase one. Claire. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, with much of the first part of what Council Brown was saying um, about postponing, that I think there's too much uncertainty. Um, if we do deliberate and come to a decision before the end of this year, then we, you know, we could still bid. It extends the time frame out some, but not terribly. Um, so I would uh, move to postpone. And George Poling. Yeah, I've always been one to urge us to keep moving things forward and get something accomplished as opposed to keep processing it. However, I think with this decision, uh, I think this would be one of the few times that I think we need to kind of take a step back. So I would be in favor and uh, postponing um, for the time being. And then if something happens between now and the time we go on council break, we can always bring it back. Great. Um, I would say that I would concur with both, uh, you know, Councilor Syrett and Councilor Poling, and um, I would be supportive of uh, postponement. I don't think that um, we have fully vetted all of our options at this point. Um, I also have several questions about, you know, what the length of time is going to take for a fully completed City Hall project. That includes phase one and phase two. How many years that's going to be, what the total cost is going to be, and what we will be committing future city councils as well as community to, uh, depending on the decisions we make around phase one. So, um, you know, I would rather us be more deliberative and take the appropriate amount of time to make the right decision and not to make a hasty decision because that's what's in front of us. So let's confirm this by you putting that motion oh, on the table. Oh, you got Alan. Al Sorry, Alan. Al <laughs> <Okay. clears throat> um, yeah, I think we need to move ex as expeditiously as possible forward, but um, what is the time frame for the three different scenarios that we're looking at for City Hall in terms of how fast could we Let's say we were able to, if we picked the current site, say January, how fast could that become City Hall? How fast could Butterfly Lot become City Hall? And how fast could eWeb become City Hall? There's a range of time <coughs> periods, um, and, and some of them involve, so eWeb would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 2020. 
and the scenario that involves us sharing a lot with the circuit court, I believe that's option B, would um, be 2019. 2018. 2018? A was 2017, B okay. was 2018, thought, and C was 2019. Okay, thank you for that, yeah. What's different about B from A with regard to the city hall building that extends the time? The architect said they would need to do some additional work in the interface between the court <coughs> building and the city hall building. Which would add a couple yeah. months, right. six months maybe. Right. Okay, so, so all right. And then, uh, so rebating doesn't apply to scenario B, it only applies to scenario A. Yes. Okay, um, so yeah, I was thinking about the uncertainty associated with all this. We still have three options on the table if we went around to bid. Uh, and uh, if I were uh, in my professional life looking at this to bid on this, I'd probably pass on bidding it because there's too much uncertainty. It's very expensive to put together a bid. And uh, having an unknown uh, selection at this point uh, would, would uh, and then it not come to fruition would be a waste of uh, effort and time and money. So I probably wouldn't bid. So I think the uncertainty that we have around these sites creates a circumstance where if we rebid right now, we wouldn't get any we have possibility of not getting any bids. Uh, and so with that in mind, I would say that postponing uh, it is also appropriate but doing it as fast as possible. I move to direct the city manager to postpone preparation of phase one construction documents until phase one site is affirmed by council. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please indicate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in favor, and none in opposition, it passes. Discussion item number two. So discussion item number two, we talked a little, Sarah um, talked a little bit about the work that the team has been doing with respect to the eWeb scenario. And the team has spent a lot of time kind of delving into learning as much as they can about the building. Um, as, as you may know, the building, um, eWeb was built in 1988. And so it's kind of hitting that 30 year point, the infrastructure starting to, to wear out and needing to be replaced. Some things that we've learned about the building or for example, that they um, have a, a higher EUI um, rating of about 150, 155. But again, that's related to some of the uses that they have for the building, it's a 24 seven operation. Um, and so we were looking at, you know, what sorts of standards, there's some seismic standards that we would need to potentially address as well as just thinking about the efficiency of the way that building works. And so what we were looking for tonight is some guidance to help us in completing our costing because the thought, what we want to do is be as thoughtful and thorough with the eWeb analysis as we are with the other three scenarios. And absent direction, what we would do is probably apply the same values and direction around, uh, you know, lead gold target, high performance building, have a strong civic character and presence, welcoming, all of those kinds of things that we've talked a lot about over the course of the last couple of years. But there are different options because it is a building that's existing to have a different range of possibilities. And so for tonight, the discussion item is for, e for the eWeb scenario, what level of renovation or improvement does council want staff to assume in building project estimates? And so from that, as we said, we could be, it could be you just want the keys, change the carpet, put some paint on the walls, but try to make it fit, right? Up to you want something that really mirrors what we were trying to accomplish as close as possible. There are some things that we wouldn't be able to accomplish because we're moving into a building <coughs> that's already existing and you can accomplish more in a brand new building in terms of energy efficiency and some of those goals that we have. So what we would, we, we would welcome is some conversation about things that are important for you to have in terms of your information with decision making with respect to costing estimates and how to apply some of the values um, that we've been using for um, phase one project for City Hall and how that would apply to eWeb cost estimating. And I think it's kind of a, a, a what they're asking for is a little bit of your help in having an apples to apples and oranges to oranges discussion because you can't really compare 
opening a door and walking into an existing building that doesn't have all the things that you're interested in with the cost of what it would be to do a building with the things that you're really interested in. So just for you to think about that. And we'll start with Alan. <laughs> Um, I agree. I think apples to apples it, comparison is what we try to look at. Again, if we're going to move to a city hall, it's going to be a 50-year building at least. Um, so that would ne necessitate refurbishing a how old is it, 40-year-old building. I'm sure there's lots of mechanical systems and electrical systems that need to be revoked. Plus, it needs to be fit what we what we would use it for as opposed to what you would have used it for. Um, getting the energy efficiency is still very important to me, and uh, so is the gold lead target. Um, and then the uh, uh, and having it be a seismic building is, is extremely important. That building was built before the new codes were in place. So, can you talk to a little bit about what you know about the seismic issues that relate to that building? I, I, uh, one of the folks I've been working on. <laughs> Thank you, Carl Sherwood, Robertson Sherwood Architects. Um, yes, there has been a tier one, um, level one seismic evaluation of the building as part of what we're looking into, which only goes into uh, trying to identify how this building at the time it was built would uh, compare with uh, buildings that would be designed today. The use of the building will not change. It's still an office building. It's still a level two uh, hazard, uh, seismic hazard identification, but the codes have changed. So if we want to bring it up to today's codes for that hazard level classification, we would build some costs in to strengthen the connections between the wall and floor systems, column systems, roof diaphragms, things like that, to bring it more in line with current codes. Um, that said, it's not, because there's no change of use or occupancy, it's not a direct requirement to do that. So that's the sort of level of decision you need to make as to whether to make that investment uh, to increase the efficiency or, or not. What's a level two? In compared to what we've designed for the uh, new Well, it's a, it's a hazard classification for the type of occupancy. Um, a best, better comparison would be for your f fire and police stations. You would, uh, it's, those are essential facilities, so there'd be a higher classification. In the case of a office building, whether it be government or a private office building, it's, it's um, considered a lower level. It's really for uh, life safety as opposed to preservation of the building. What was the level we were planning to build the we, new city hall at? We were not planning to build to essential facility standards. That was a decision that council made previously. It was, it was above just basic office building. Yeah. Right? It was kind yeah. of two plus, but not all the way to three. It was, uh, wasn't it 1.25 versus 1.5? 1. 1.5 1. 5 instead of well, 1.5 is essential police and fire first responders. 1.25 is a life safety yeah. uh, What's one? standard. What? What's that? One is just a regular office building? Probably, yeah. Okay. And what I'm hearing is, is that the codes to get to a 1.25 maybe are different today than they were when it was first built. Right. That's yeah. the... Right, right. So yeah, I guess having all those things in place uh, uh, so that there is an apples to apples comparison makes sense to me. Um, I'm wondering about the square footage. You went over that real quickly. Um, go back to that slide. Um, Anybody know how? <laughs> it wasn't on a slide. Yeah, I, I just told you what the numbers were. Yeah, right. Um, so you had the, so the, that's 14,300 square feet for the North Building. And then all the, but the fourth floor is 86,000 square feet? 73,757 for all of this, not including that fourth floor. The fourth floor is an additional 11.8. Close to, this is that part that I'm going around right now, is 11,008. And what was the programmed need for a thing? Uh, so if you wanted to, if you wanted to show 
the same that you have in the other scenarios, it would require a new building of 67,000 square feet. And that would be the total program, the same as, so these, all of those colors right there add up to be the same as the green and yellow right, right here. Right. Okay. So it is apples to apples then. In terms of space. Right. Yeah. But the, the advantage that EWEB has is you have part of the phase two. Yeah. You have part of it. But the other side of that is it's more expensive up front. Right. So I think at some point, you know, at some point we'll, you'll, we'll leave this conversation away from, you know, and I think that's the next section is how much do you really need to know about phase two um, in order to make your phase one? Because I'm starting to, I'm going to introduce something radical that we stop thinking of it in terms of phases and start thinking of it as city hall and a city services building because it's not, it's, they're a little bit different because already if you think about how we are in downtown right now, we have city services sprinkled around in different, phase two is already here. It's just sprinkled around, the city services are sprinkled, sprinkled around. So it's not really like you're building for a new service. It's, it's a different way of organizing us into an ecosystem of a building as opposed to an ecosystem of a downtown. Right, right. right. And the cost formula is how cheap is the rent that we're paying compared to how much would the debt service be of buying a new building and comparing those two. So it's not just eliminating rental fees, but you pick up uh, new building costs. So if, if where we're staying right now is cheap enough, then, then this uh, moving into a bigger building actually costs more. Yes. Right. Good. So, so basically, the yellow and green, light green part is about 86, 87,000 square feet. So it's about two and a half times what we're actually programming right now for phase one. So you, that's why it would cost a lot more if you just did you. square foot, right? It, yeah. it seems to me that one of the questions, maybe not for now, because I think we're still just talking about phase one. But if in the conversation about a future phase two, it's not only about the cost of <coughs> the way we're doing it now as compared to the cost of doing it in the future in one space, but it's also what the functionality you gain from that that has to be taken in, into consideration. There are other kinds of costs um, involved in thinking about the benefit or not of uh, everybody being in proximity to each other, and also, the, again, the kind of fun, uh, flexibility and functionality of the building that you won't have, uh, perhaps, in a building that's already there. So those are all things to be thought about. Greg, go ahead. So, I mean, I, 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 I kind of in the, in the same ballpark with, based on, you know, before what Sarah said is I'm looking at functionality, and that is, you know, eventually we want to get to a point, and this is what people say to us in the community, or at least say it to me, where they would have one, one site, one stop, where they can actually engage city government in one place, not all over the map. And so my, my questions around, you know, eWeb are, you know, yeah, we want to get the same kind of valuation out of this as we would a new building in, in some respects. But I take this to a little bit of a different metaphor. Uh, forgive me, Chris, on this one. But, you know, as, as, as my mother would say, I need a car. I don't need a Mercedes. I need a Ford. And in this context, I think people in, in, in this community want a Ford, a, a, a building that is functional, that, you know, brings together all the elements of the city that we need, and that includes a phase one into a fa moving into a phase two, that we bring it up to code in the, in, in, in the way that we want to, you know, have this and what it's supposed to be, and um, that we, you know, are, you know, giving people the value for their tax dollars that they're expecting to get out of it. Um, you know, we hear from people all the time, regular residents, business community, variety of other places in the community, and some other people have some other ideas, but I hear the majority of people say, give us a functional city hall, you know, and 
that's what I'm really looking at. And if that means that, you know, we can, you know, retrofit eWeb to be able to, you know, give the community that level of functionality, then for me, that you know, <coughs> would make more sense than for us to look at, you know, trying to build something from scratch that, you know, eventually we may or may not get to phase two, or we may get to a situation where, you know, phase two is not feasible from a financial standpoint. And, you know, I think we need to look down the road at a total, at the total package as what happens when it's thoroughly finished. And I think that um, I like to see where we come out with, with a full analysis of what eWeb would look like. George? Yeah, thank you. Um, I came on the council in 2003, and we had some discussions then about the new city hall. Mm -hmm. And there's one topic that's been constant the whole time, and that is bringing all the services into one, one spot or one area. So um, if we could do that here, that would be great. Um, you know, I think it would be more efficient not only for the city, but also for the, the people using the, the city services. Um, we definitely want to make the investment to upgrade the, the seismic standards. I mean, it would be ridiculous to, you know, purchase a building that we know doesn't meet. So we need to make sure that those are up to uh, date. Whatever we do, we may, we may need to make sure that we do it right because this is a, a building that will be in for a long time and that we need to be proud of. And uh, to what Christy was saying, I, I, I believe we need to use the mirror the values that we're currently using as best we can with doing a, re, a remodel of the eWeb building if that's the route we're going to take. I think we need to stick to the values that we originally came up with because I think they're, they're excellent. Claire? Yeah, um, I agree with Councilor Poling. Um, I have a question though, when we were way back when, when I first came on council and we went through the various decision points and you have got taken off the table at that point, I'm glad it's coming back, but there was some preliminary work done there. So I'm assuming you're building on that and that some of the values that the council had identified was embedded in that work. Is that correct? Yeah, we've been applying the council values because that's been consistent all along throughout the project. And uh, I know the team is taking into consideration, but what we're looking at in terms of eWeb isn't the exact same analysis that we did previously. There was a smaller footprint the last time we were looking at eWeb. And so we're having to do some, some take a different look. And it has been a little while ago, so some changes. We want to make sure that we consider all the changes that have been made. But. And then to Councilor Zelenka's point that if we move into a space where we have more than we need at the time, could we do what eWeb's done and rent some of it out? I think it's true. It's always an option to yeah. consider. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I agree with Councilor Polling. I would want us to do this comparison as closely as possible. Obviously, um, you know, there was design in the first iteration of the city hall at at the current location, you know, with transparency and, and throughness that wouldn't be achievable in the eWeb site. So I'm not necessarily suggesting a full design of, you know, what city council chambers might look like, but some estimate of moving towards a city council chamber that embodies the things you know we've asked for in, in that design. I would want, uh, you know, since this council voted not to go to the higher seismic standard, I would want that same, what we did vote for, um, to be applied to what eWeb would need. Same with the lead gold. Um, and, you know, I, I think the building as it stands now reflects a lot of the values that we've identified in terms of stewardship, um, identity, participation, simplicity, um, and connecting us with the river, which I think is kind of a newly emerging value that we've had as we've talked about connecting down down to the river so those are my thoughts George um, I think it should match the you know as closely as possible the values that we have for 
phase one, uh, you know, be as energy efficient as possible, life safety standard, seismic, so, you know, rating, at least, minimum. Um, maybe see what it would cost to upgrade that a little bit. Um, otherwise, you know, pretty much the same values. Thank you. Mike? Thank you, Mayor. I couldn't agree more that we need an apples to apples comparison and that we should use the same values. But let me just say this. Um, a couple of the values, both identity and Eugene at 200, two of the values that we've been using all along, I think are important. They're certainly forward looking, both of them. Every time we talk about City Hall, the same words are used that we used earlier tonight when we said the historic <coughs> core, the historic center of our downtown. Those are backward looking words. I think that every forward-looking document the city has talks about Willamette to Willamette. It talks about the return to the river. It talks about the importance of it as the identity of our community in the future. And I think based on the plans we already know about with the expansion of the university, with the expansion of the market district and what Mr. Obi has planned in that area, with the expansion and this m fantastic success we've had downtown in both tech and financial areas that our downtown is changing more to the river and that I believe will in the long term become our core. So in order to meet these two values of both identity and Eugene at 200, it seems to me we should be talking about this in an apples to apples comparison with other city plans and other city goals and the same sort of language we use when we talk about those other areas. And when we talk about stewardship, I think Greg hit on an important point that I, I like that the Mercedes versus Ford analogy, That's, that was nice. The way I would define it is to say that stewardship is understanding the difference between need and want. We have identified the things that we want and, and our ideal for what those values look like in building a new place, and that's wonderful, that's what we should do. But I think it's important for us to recognize what we need the, the value of the apples to apples comparison for me is new construction gives us only what we want and it may not give us only what we need. And the importance of that is the time value of money. We can get what we need and incrementally <coughs> over time have it created and transformed into what we want. And we can do it in an, in an affordable and incremental way. And so for me, I think stewardship means recognizing that difference that this gets us to the place where we're moving forward and gives us the ability to continue to move towards our, our, our best outcomes. Thank you. Betty? Okay, we abandoned stewardship long ago when we destroyed what we had. Um, that's, that, so why talk about that? I came on the council in 1997. People were already wanting to tear down City, city Hall. If we went to eWeb, people would probably be wanting to tear that down in a few years because it's an old building and it's as old as City Hall was when they went, started trying to tear it down. Um, and as for the price saving money, when we found out when we demolished, when they demolished City Hall, the price kept going up and the price of, of rebuilding kept going up. And the same thing would happen if you start trying to adapt eWeb. But the main thing is about eWeb, it is in the wrong place. And the city hall exists for the people, for the citizens, not for just the city council. It is in the, it should be close to the county building. It should be, yeah, we talked about consolidating it. Originally, we used to talk about when the fire department moved out and the police moved out, then we could bring the rental places, people back, that never happened. I don't know why it never happened, but it didn't happen. And uh, it would be good if all the city was together, but certainly the parts that the public needs to relate to need to be in one spot, and it needs to be close to the county. And I don't think the county is going to move down to the e-website. Uh, people do not know. I know when I first came to town, I had some question about my property or the adjoining property or something, and I didn't know whether I had a city question or a county question. 
but when I went down, at least they just said go across the street. They didn't say walk up through two blocks and walk over that way. Another thing wrong with the e-website is that it is not accessible to people who don't drive. It is not, in the daytime maybe, it would be easy enough to take a bus and walk down there. But if you want to attend the night meeting and we should, we want to be accessible for people who want to come to council meetings, you want to come to a night meeting, you walk out of that place at 10 o'clock and you have to get a bus. You're going to have to walk down some dark streets. And I don't think that the bus, buses are going to start running up there on council meeting nights. So I think it, I, that alone is enough reason not to go there, in my opinion. Whether it's a beautiful building or not, it needs to. It's for the, it's for the public, for the benefit of the public. Thank you, Chris. You can do um, mm -hmm. For those who want. Uh, it, one of the reasons we abandoned and tore down the old city hall was because it was seismically mm -hmm. inappropriate in the course of an event. A seismic event, the building would be unsafe. If it didn't collapse, it would at least be unusable. And um, I think it's interesting for me that we're saying we, we want to move into a building, whether it's new or one we renovated, that is only marginally better than that. In other words, if there's a major seismic event, the building will be unusable. And so we will have spent an enormous amount of money on a building that will be closed in the event of an earthquake another one of the buildings that we can't use. So we'll have to set a tent up somewhere and that's where we'll do our thing because the building we've paid all this money for will not be usable. Um, I, I like the Mercedes versus Ford analogy except the one I would use would be a new car versus a used car. And a new car comes with a warranty, it's brand new, it will run and it works. And I don't have to pay a ton of money for it but at least it's new. If I buy a car that's five years old or ten years old, it's a used car so you know that has all that built-in psychological value, but I'll have to change the timing belt. And then pretty soon the uh, engine bearings will have to be replaced. I mean, I have a used car, and I just got done spending $480 on a transmission cable um, because it wore out. It wears out. And so now we're saying, we get this used building, we got to fix it to make it run well for the next several years. What will that cost? We have to buy the building, and then we have to make the building functional and workable and able to be operated. So it gets back to the notion of function. Um, I'm not afraid of a used building, but I'm also not afraid of a new building simply because it's a new building. Um, I want to get the right building, whether it's new or it's used, but I want to get a building that's functional, that will work. Um, I don't want a palace, but I want something appropriate, and I can get that new as well as I can get it used. Um, I think longevity is an important consideration. Right now, the eWeb building, and I've toured it, doesn't have a council chamber. The closest they have to a place where you could hold meetings, city council meetings, is a room like this. So is it appropriate for the city of Eugene to hold its city council <coughs> official meetings in a room like this? No. You'd need to renovate a <coughs> place there. There's probably a place where you could do it, up in the cafeteria on the second floor but you've got to turn that into a council chamber and what does that cost and how do people get to the second floor and how does all of that work. Um, and I know that we, we talk about the riverfront as being the new place where we all want to be, but to me downtown is downtown. I mean it's, it's a defined place, whether it's in a plan or in people's minds, downtown is downtown. If you want to move to the riverfront, do it acknowledging the fact you're moving out of downtown. The city government of Eugene is moving out of downtown. And that would be a concern to me. So um, I'll have a couple comments and then I'll just see if anybody, anybody else just need, wants to make more comments this round and then we'll move on to the next um, <coughs> question item. What I would say is um, I don't w think the public wants us to, nor do I think it's good for us just to make do. I, I think we have to, if you're going to go to this effort, you should have something that's functions well for the for the duties that we have as a city. So I think that's important. The functionality is really important. I think that it's forward thinking is really important. I think we have big goals with the CRO and those kinds of things that we need to be aim, aiming at with whatever building we're in. So I don't think you can shortchange your major goals as a city by um, by not doing what you need to do when you need to do it. So that I think all those things need to be taken 
um, into account in, in the quality of the building and the way it functions and lets people work and do the job we're supposed to do. And you've all touched on parts of that. And the other part for me is I think there's just a decision point here. If all things are even, where do you want to be? Because one of the reasons we're in the midst of this big discussion with the county is because there's enough people around this table who said they want to have a civic center downtown. That's why we're having the discussion with the county about this area. So I think, you know, your first, one of your first decisions, other than all else aside, is where do you really, where do you all really want that to be? And if it's kind of a, you could make a case for any of it, what is the preferred place? And then you move from there. And, um, and then uh, as I listen to you, I think you all, or most of you, want it to be of the kind of quality of place that you can really do a good job of doing city business. So just want to add that. So I know Alan wants to talk. Anybody else? Claire? Okay, Alan? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think one of the things we found out from the old city hall during deconstruction was that it was a worse building than we thought it was. It was going to cost a lot more than we thought to, to re renovate it uh, when we started to pull it apart. Um, I, when I look at all these options, I think all the options get us to a consolidated city hall. You can get phase two in there, and so they all work from that perspective for me. Uh, from a functionality standpoint, they all can get us there. Uh, it's just a matter of how much money do you spend to get us there. Uh, so they all can kind of get us there from the functionality standpoint. Operating costs are become important, I think, uh, in this conversation because our that's our budget constraint. So over the long term, from a budget perspective, having good operating costs is is very important. That so that brings into play energy efficiency and also the quality and the longevity that we expect of the building. Um, that's that kind of used car, new car thing that Chris was talking about. The other thing I think about is location. And all of the options A, B, and C are in the downtown core. Well, I love the river, and I love being on the river, and it's really pretty there. And, and the building, well, when you're looking at it from the river, it's, it looks great. When you're looking at it from the other side, I think it's ugly. But uh, when you so that's all nice, it's, but it is very isolated from downtown. It, it is not downtown. You got the viaduct on one side and the railroad on the other side, so you're kind of separated out from it. And uh, I, I share some of Betty's concerns about accessibility. So, question that the mayor brought up, I think, is an appropriate one. Do you want to move from downtown? Mm -hmm. If that's okay, then moving to to the eWeb spot is is an okay move. I, I'm I'm still thinking about that. I don't, I don't know that that's a good trade-off for us. And then finally, when it comes to the, this, the, the upfront cost of the eWeb become important. It's two and a half times bigger building. If we're just doing dollars per square foot, that means it's two and a half times more expensive upfront to buy eWeb because you have to buy the whole building. So at two and a half times, so instead of 18 million, it's like $45 million. That's $27 million more than what we're planning on spending right now. Where would we come up with that extra money to pay for it up front uh, and without doing a bond? And so that's a substantial change in how we would pay for this and where we would get that money to go, to go forward. Um, I, I'm not sure we could get a layaway plan from eWeb. I think they want to sell the property and, and move, move on. So uh, just on a square foot basis, the, the costs are going to be substantially different. Uh, and I don't, do we have a, a plan for uh, how we would do that and what – have you guys talked about the location issues about being in downtown? We haven't talked about that. We talked about that previously when we considered the eWeb option as, you know, location was one of the things. And it is one of the values and consideration points for council to consider as we move forward. Our intent is to understand what we need to <coughs> apply to the costing model in terms of providing that information and bringing it back and then how you all want to apply all of your other values and considerations with that information to uh, complement your decision making. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, too, that in the case of eWeb, you're talking about the cost of land and the cost of the building. Mm -hmm. 
not just one or the other. You're talking about both, right? When you talk about the property that we're, if we build on our own property, you're talking about the cost of a building, but not the cost of the land. And if you're talking about the butterfly lot, you're really talking about a possible trade of properties that are owned by t two different jurisdictions. So you've got different kinds of addition going on here of what it would really, what the cost would really be. I've got Claire and then Mike and then George polling. Yeah, so I'm a little concerned that Councilor Zelenka throwing out numbers because the whole point here is to dial down into the numbers. And I remember when we discussed this before that the eWeb option was the most bang for our buck. Now that may not be the case anymore, but that's the reason I'm leaning back and trying to, and glad that we're having this conversation. So I hope that we will wait till we actually get some dollars in front of us before we assume that moving there is gonna be twice as expensive as what we've been talking about. And I've been really concerned about the phase one because we diminished that design in order to make it more affordable. And so while we might not need to buy the land that it's on, we're getting, I think, a lesser pro product if we go down that road considering our budget constraints. And I'm concerned to, to reference what Councillor Clark said that if we stayed with phase one, we might not get what we need or what we want. Um, so I think one thing in terms of the eWeb building, in terms of costing, we would really want to look into what systems in terms of environmental systems would need to be refurbished, what, what might be the cost estimates for those. Um, and then I just want to address a couple of other things. I, I don't see anywhere on the project values consolidation as a, a value nor co-locating with county um, services. So if that was an important piece to the council in the past, it didn't make it on the list. Um, and we already decided that phase one city hall wouldn't, won't survive an earthquake, won't be usable after an earthquake. That's a council uh, decision a majority made here. I didn't agree with it. I didn't think it was the right decision, but that's the decision that was made. So if we're gonna compare the eWeb building, it needs to be compared in the same way. Um, and lastly, I, I really push back on this idea that, the, I, that going to eWeb would just benefit council and staff and only be some wonderful thing for them. The public used to use the eWeb building all the time for evening meetings. Lots of social organizations used that building in the community rooms, which are now closed because they've rented it out to a private company. People were down there. Uh, into the evening at meetings. Now, perhaps they couldn't walk out and, and walk to the downtown bus station very easily, um, but I don't think that's a reason to, to throw the idea out. And it was very much valued by the community, and when they'd go down and, and do events there, the location was part of the value that they had with the building. Um, Mike, and then George Pollard, and then Greg. Thank you, Mayor. I'm, I'm hopeful that when we talk about apples to apples comparisons, we start with what Alan said and go on to have the fuller conversation in many of the things that Claire mentioned and then add the rest. So in other words, I'm hoping that we're having this conversation on a cost per square foot basis so that we know if we choose this option, we own the land, but we gotta build something new and the interior of it and that's gonna be X per square foot net total. And if we say, well, if we want to buy eWeb, that's going to cost X, and we won't have to do any building now, we'll have to refurbish a little, but that's going to be X per square foot, okay? So, so that we have an accurate cost considering, I mean, an accurate comparison considering all the extemporaneous costs, because there's three areas. There's either, there's refurbishing, there's buying, and there's selling. If we choose eWeb, or if we choose option B, no, excuse me, if we choose eWeb or option C, we can sell that entire block and that, def that, that lowers the cost in total per square foot as a total project cost. And if we're working with eWeb on the other land and find a different, more creative way, that's <coughs> another way to lower the cost per square foot of the total project. So if we're gonna compare apples to apples, I hope we're doing it on complete costs and not just some slice of it. I also wanna push back on the idea a little bit, with respect, of choosing location first or separately than all these other considerations. I think that location is important. 
just like all of these values are important, stewardship's important, Eugenia 200's important, all of these values are important and we should not make the decision about location in isolation. I think that's a very bad way to make this decision. And lastly, I would say that I, I appreciate though the mayor and, and Alan's comments because I think they under, underline and underscore what I said earlier and it's this. The idea of us having our city hall at eWeb does not represent the city of Eugene leaving downtown. It's, it represents our city's understanding and fulfillment of the goals we've had for years for downtown to move to the river. That's what we've been trying to do for years. And we're just recognizing that that's what tomorrow looks like and it's what we've been planning for. My, uh, George Foley. Thank you. Yeah, Claire brought up one of the points that I was making, and that was that we all need to use some caution when we're talking about the cost of the eWeb building versus building new at some other location because we haven't even started looking at that. So I think we just need to be really cautious about that. Um, you know, having had some time to think about the seismic standards, how difficult would it be to get the costing of the 1.25 versus the 1.5? Uh, to get the difference in in, uh, in cost on that. I can't speak to the level of difficulty from a technical perspective, but if that's information that you need to help inform your decision making, we will work on getting that for council. Because yeah, I'm having second thoughts about my vote. <laughs> uh, the other thing, yeah, currently the, the eWeb property, I feel like it's isolated, but with the vision that we have for the riverfront redevelopment, and like Mike has pointed out, our overall vision of the city to to start moving back to the river i think in in the long run it won't be isolated it won't be such a scary dark place at night and then the last thing i i, I agree with the mayor that we all are here discussing this as well as with the county commissioners because you know we decided it was the time for us to all to get together but the reason why we're now discussing eweb again is because when we started the jeo discussions eWeb, as far as I was concerned, was off the table, even though my good friend Mike kept saying, let's buy eWeb, let's buy eWeb. But since we started that discussion, we've gotten a definitive answer or statement from eWeb that now that property is available for sale. So that's, we're not abandoning what we're doing with the county commissioners. We've just added the eWeb property into our discussion. We, we had to, to be, Fiscally responsible, we had to add that to our dis overall discussion. Great. And I'm going to preface my comments by not saying I'm not committed to any one of these options at this point. But I will say this, you know, eWeb is part of downtown. There's a federal building that was built not too far away from that. We also have an urban renewal district that we are going to have some kind of major investment in at some point when, you know, property changes hands and all the rest of that. That's part of a continuum from the university along the river and all the way, all the way through. And so, you know, I look at the map and, you know, I've walked it over the past 30 years. You know, it's three blocks. <laughs> from where the existing site of, you know, the old city hall is. And, you know, like I said, there was a new federal building built. There is the old federal building. And it's part of a broader vision of what downtown is than just what the historic core of downtown is. And so I think that, you know, we need to be looking at how we leverage all of our assets and the continuity of the space between the university, what is traditionally downtown, the riverfront, and the eventual development of the riverfront, and then even going across the bridge over to Coburg. Because, you know, eWeb is not located in Santa Clara. It's located in downtown Eugene. And I think that we need to keep that in mind. The people that's getting ready to move completely out of downtown is eWeb itself. 
and they're moving out in my neighborhood. They're already there. So, you know, I, I think that we need to be very, you know, visionary in terms of what the city is ultimately going to look like in 50, 100 years from now and not just be focused on what it looked like in the 19th century. Chris? Um, uh, some, kept following in on something that um, George said, do we actually have an offer from eWeb to purchase it? Have they made a, an offer to us to buy the building? No, what they have, what they have said, my understanding is both in their commission uh, meeting and then Frank has mentioned to me that um, they would have an interest in moving uh, to their current site with the rest of their property. They have not declared it surplus yet, for example, which is really part of the legal process. For so the building is not formally for sale. It's just it's kind of you know you, through the grapevine we've heard they are thinking about moving out and that maybe it would be for sale. Uh, they have not officially <coughs> said it's for sale. They have uh, indicated that intent both in their commission meetings and then Frank has mentioned that in. A Okay, so it's more than just a rumor. There's a there's an intent there, but it's not been formalized yet. No, I was just going to say the um, timelines that we're working with, which would have indicated a, a move-in date of 2020, so three years out to get there, and the eight years out for, <coughs> for numbers that we're working on with EWEB. Okay, and that's in conversation with them? You've kind of worked we, out that? We tried to come up with what are the assumptions we should build in that seemed reasonable. Okay, okay. Um, when did we start negotiating with EWEB on the, the riverfront property? When did you first start negotiating that? Good point. Uh, 18 months ago, 12 to 18 months ago. 12 to 18 months ago, so a year and a half ago. Uh, and you haven't finalized those negotiations at this point. That's true. So using that as kind of a guideline for what the negotiations might look like, it may be 18 months, two years before we negotiate, even just to reach the agreement on the property itself. Then you have the work that would need to be done to get it ready, and you've got design work and architect based on what we've already experienced with this city hall, you're probably talking about another 18 months to two years. Uh, then you actually have the construction, which means I think 2020 is overly optimistic. I think we're now talking about a completed city hall in more like 2022, 2023. Um, and that seems like an awful long time when we have options in front of us that that could be done much sooner than that. And I don't want speed to be the determination, but on the other hand, it looks like there's a lot of unknowns that we don't we don't ha we don't have at this point. Dollars, timelines, a whole lot of it. And I agree, we don't know the dollars, we don't know the timelines, we don't know the conditions. Um, there's still a lot of questions to be answered. And I just look at it and I say, those answers are going to mean we're now looking at a date to complete a city hall, 2022, 2023, quite a long time from now simply to go through all that process. If we're comfortable with that, that's okay. Um, I wanted to have the city hall finished last year or this year. Um, and now we're talking about, you know, five, six years from now, seven years from now. It just seems like a long time. Um, to, to, to buy an old building and fix it up. John? Just uh, remember, uh, tonight, really all we're asking, um, this is actually helpful conversation as we move forward, and this will be, my guess is you'll continue this particular type of conversation over the next uh, many weeks. Uh, and uh, I wanted to make sure we clarify what the direction is on this one before we move on to the next discussion. <coughs> so whenever you're ready to do that, I just want to make sure. You want a motion? <laughs> what kind of clarification are we getting here? Do you here? want a motion? Um, so I just want to say a couple things before we try to land this in some way for you is that um, I don't think it's it's necessary to badmouth either location to to prefer one over the other. They both have their, value, their, their good values. And I do think we've talked about connecting to the river, but I would also point out that our downtown is only sort of two years back and it's still pretty fragile and we're trying to give breathe new life into our park blocks and that's an important piece of the discussion as well so you have to put all those different values together to figure out where that 
where that best place is. It's not one is perfect and the other is a dog. It really is that there are things that you've been working hard on for a long time that you <coughs> connect with and you need to be thinking about that. And, uh, and I, I would venture to say that we're always going to love eWeb because of the connection to the river and that whole, lo that whole location. So I'm not pushing one way or another, but I do think you don't want to walk away from, from thinking about how does, it, how does your decision connect to a pretty fragile new trying to uh, firm itself down, reinvigorated downtown. That's an important question. But do you gain from having civic connections in the center of downtown? What does this do to trying to reinvigorate the park blocks and make them really the center of our urban core here? Those are all things that you need to be taking into consideration as you make, um, as you make this decision. So I don't know, John, it seems like what we've said is, uh, the question was, um, yeah, it's right here. The question was, for what level of renovation improvement does council want staff to assume in project estimates, how do you think you've, how do you, what do you think of the information that you? Uh, but, uh, I've heard is you want us to evaluate eWeb as a, a lead gold, mm -hmm. the high performance building trying to get as close to EUI of 30 uh, in particular. Are there other? Uh, I also heard the seismic piece. Oh, yeah, at, seismic at 1.25. Yeah, well, what I heard is 1.25, but then also as a separate piece eventually is what it would take to get any particular project to 1.5, and that would be regardless of the scenario. So that's sort of a separate piece. And functionality and programming, a little bit of information along those, along not just what, what it would take to function in the building a little bit. And building. What I, I heard was that yes. uh, the systems will be a that part the, of that whole high performance. What I heard was the values, I heard that from almost everybody. The, the values are the same. Mm -hmm. What they want out of the building, whether it's renovated or new, are very similar in terms of um, efficiency and functionality. So somebody would be happy to make that motion. That would be helpful <laughs> for us. Just so we're okay. Well, let's Go ahead, Greg. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Can we have yeah, some? Right. Yeah, I mean, so, so uh, Glenn, maybe Glenn can help us with this. I haven't worked in the values language, but this is what I wrote out about three minutes ago. Move <coughs> the direct city staff to cost out an eWeb option using as close to an apples to apples comparison with respect to the values as is practicable. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Second and a motion. <laughs> Uh, again, I would I would urge that we. It, it sounds like when we get to that, we're going to be talking about costs, right? Mm -hmm. Now again, we're talking about just the cost of renovating in isolation, as opposed to building new and renovating that space in isolation without all the other financial factors that come into play. So, I would hope that in that motion, you're hearing us say. This, you know, the, the, the money gleaned from the sale of the other land, the, all of the financial pieces, the cost of purchase, all of the other financial pieces that come into play that make an accurate per square foot cost. What I would, what I, the way I would say it is, is this is only one piece of a broader economic um, analysis that you will probably want to go through. So this piece is, is if we decide how much it costs to make it lead gold, certain things that have to happen to the building in order to do that. Now, in the context of um, what does that mean for timing, for leases, uh, for sale of the property and all of that, that's a, a broader piece of the economic right. pass package that comes together. And what we pay while we wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all those other pieces will have to be presented and then you can sort of work through some of those as well. But Alan and then George Poling. Yeah, just um, to clarify what I was talking about in terms of the cost, it, when we're doing this apples to apples comparison, we're talking about building a 35,000 square foot building. But if we buy eWeb, 
you can't buy 35,000 square feet. You gotta buy 87,000 square feet. And so it's two and a half times as much as the 35,000. So that, those two things can't be apples to apples. How, how are you gonna deal with that? I mean, that's 18 million versus 45 million. But I think that's one of those other factors. So if we know that it costs $10 to do a current phase one and it costs $13 to do all of eWeb, then I think part of your conversation will be is the, do you want to move forward with the other $3 because it makes sense, either square foot value, space, timing, or it doesn't make sense because we don't have the money to do it. We don't have the money. And so I think those are part of the, it's, it's not going to be able to bring everything down to a single number that then you then you can just say, well, that number is bigger than that number. I think there's several uh, pieces of the puzzle that individually and then eventually collectively you're going to have to put together and say this is what we want it. As long as when we do that, <clears throat> so far what we've done is we've said build new and remodel are the same price per square foot. So as long as we keep that going forward, I, I don't understand why it would be different for eWeb. You know, I think that's why we've hired folks to, to dive into it a little bit more. So for example, if you want to move from a 155 EUI currently to something close to 30, you're probably going to have to redo all the HVAC system and put in new windows, right? So, it's 40 years old. You know, so I don't know how much that costs, but they do, and so then they can start bringing us a little bit more definitive answers to those rather than just a little bit higher. Right. Uh, as long as it's apples to apples, is, right. and that's, that's the intent of this motion, right. I support yes. it. George Poling. Yeah, this is a minor thing. I, I realize we kind of snuck up on Glenn on the, the motion, but I, I don't think that we can direct staff. I think that the motion needs yeah. to be that we <laughs> direct the manager. Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was, it was, it's not ah. Glenn's fault. Throw the city manager <laughs> into the box. Was the motion direct the staff? Staff, yeah. <laughs> direct the manager. Good catch. I, I was impressed that he already had it going, though, before we got there. I was going to mention that to Glenn later, but. <laughs> I accept it friendly. You have to re-vote it. We haven't voted yet. It's a friendly night. Okay. I, accept, I accept it as friendly. Okay. Ah. All right. So we're replacing the, the language with the uh, direct the manager. Direct the manager. Okay. Yay. All those in favor, please indicate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In opposition, one, eight. It passes. Thank you. And then you had this... Um, Item three, for all scenarios, how much information does council need on phase two? <laughs> We're getting to the easy stuff now. <laughs> so um, let me just introduce this a little bit. As you recall, when we went through the first three scenarios, uh, the direction you gave us was phase one plus an all new consolidated phase two. And those three scenarios, you'll get more information about that, but we're showing that it's technically feasible. So we then kind of made that assumption that you would want that same uh, information as it relates to uh, the e-website. But what you haven't said is kind of that conversation where I said spoiler alert, you know, is it really important? Is it an important value? And how much more do you want us to continue to explore? Do you also want to explore the possibility of city services staying kind of where they are or in some other format or is it um, how much I think it's just really around we're, we're unclear whether having a land bank knowing that this is many many years down the road is enough or do you want to have a real specific so currently on all of these items what we've been told is your the phase this sort of um, amorphous phase two can be, a, uh, in terms of the size that you've been looking at, can be accomplished in all of these scenarios. Mm -hmm. And it's no more detail than that. It's just possible with all of them, correct? Yes. And, and at least for the first three scenarios, the relative cost for phase two is probably pretty close because it's essentially the same size building just in a different location. eWeb's a little bit different as we've seen just because you get sort of this phase one plus, so that adds a little bit more complexity into the eWeb conversation. So possibly the, the, the sort of a simplified version of phase two for the three and then the slightly different um, 
assumptions around eWeb that you can look at, right? Is that what you're basically saying? Um, no. Because you wanted to, you want to you're audience. wanting to distinguish that they're not the same, we're, so you have to say, you have to indicate something about that. Yeah. We're, I think what we're trying to uh, determine is really how much do you have to have about phase two, which is this far distant yep. piece, in order to make a phase one decision. So it's not really about do you want to have a phase one and two. It's more, you know, we're trying to uh, get you to a place where you can have kind of a preferred scenario or scenarios by. The time you go on break, which is which is close, and we're we're still trying to maintain that timeline, so it's it's a question as to whether um, how much time we should be spending on costing out multiple different brand new variations of phase two, or is it going to be uh, a preferred scenario that we just say you have a land bank? We're starting to just try to figure out is that you know move forward with a land city bank hall, you really land bank to the the three yeah. and, and the it other could is yeah. not a land bank, right? It's a it's a building bank. I don't know. It's a, on eWeb, well, yeah. you would still be land banking. You would still have to land bank for the additional sixty-seven thousand square feet if you really want to have all city services one stop right there. Mike, thank you, Mayor. I, I would I would suggest that we need to do a, an accurate comparison that information on phase two because at least with the eWeb op and that's eWeb option that's where some of the most significant savings occur that's what makes the comparison the smarter comparison because of the amount of money that gets saved in the phase two area and i think personally that it's beyond that because of the amount of money we're talking about for a phase two on any of the first three options i think if we're saying well, well, we'll figure that out later. Again, we're as good as saying we're not going to build it because that's a significant number, and I don't think we've had any real serious discussion yet about how the city would afford that. I think that's a very large number based on what we already know. So for me, we, I, <coughs> I will absolutely want to see us Talk about phase two in as much detail as we can, you know, meaningfully do, because it's what makes the comparison so much more uh, uh, germane to the conversation about the value of eWeb. And I think it, frankly, provides us a path to phase two, because let's say just hypothetically, just hypothetically, if the cost of phase two on a square footage basis is anywhere near what phase one of the previous plan was. One was 28 to 32,000 square feet, so that means in phase two with the previous plan, we'd need 100,000 square feet. So we're talking about if one was close to $1,000 a square foot, we'd need almost $100 million to build phase two with the previous planning. Now. I honestly don't believe that will ever happen in this city, that we'll build a phase two city hall for $100 million. So it, that's the critical part I think we need to discuss because it's the only way I think we get to a meaningful phase two. So. Alan? When I first got on council uh, 10 years ago, we were in the midst of a conversation about a consolidated city hall mm -hmm. process. We'd just gone through like a couple of years of doing that did the little clicker things and everything. And um, and it ended up being not having very much support, nowhere near majority when we pulled it and it was way too expensive. It was like $120 million. And so it died, which is actually why we're talking about a small city hall now, uh, which is a much smaller city hall because that, that plan didn't make much sense. And I, I agree with Mike, it was never gonna be possible. So, um, that, that, that's, I always keep thinking about that, so that, and, and I think of that when I think of how important phase two is. All of the options, including eWeb, have phase two as possible, so none of them have obstructions to doing that, so th then they're all kind of equal in that regard. Um, then I think about that old city hall process and the fact that um, us building a new a phase two may never happen, 
especially when I think of we're going to the county is going to put out a bond for maybe 50 to 60 million dollars for half the price of the courthouse and we got a parks bond that might be coming up and I think we're going to run out of appetite for building stuff for 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 uh, getting money out of folks so that makes it longer to have phase two be out there um, and then I, I I guess when I think of any of the phase two in terms of the cost what we've said all along is all of the costs are the same remodel or build so if we're trying to get the same exact number of square feet, all the costs are going to be basically the same except for the other things that make it uh, different. Um, and so uh, so all of that put together makes phase two important to have in the context, but it's not real important to me in terms of where we go in the short term for phase one. So I, I think it's, you know, on a scale of one to ten, it's kind of like a two. It's not, it, it's important that we vision it, but it, um, I don't know that we need to ha have it direct what we're doing in terms of our short-term decision about a, a new city hall location. George Pauling. Yeah, um, I kind of agree with Mike's comments about looking at the cost of a phase phase two at eWeb. Um, I'm a little hesitant though to start talking about phase two costs at this point because we don't know. I mean. Sure, I, I'm sure the, the engineers and the planners and everybody have a way to try to project out what the costs are going to be 10 years or 15 years down the road, but we really don't know. Uh, I, it'll probably be significantly more per square foot than we're paying right now. Um, but, you know, I think that's an important piece of information to, to get uh, to further our discussion. And the, the talk about consolidation in, in reference to what Alan was talking about, um, we were presented a Taj Mahal type mm -hmm. facility and it included, at that time it included police services as well as consolidating all of, all of the other um, services that the city offers. And I think that was kind of one of the reasons why it didn't go anywhere, uh, not so much the cost, but you know, with the, the police department moving out to um, Country Club, I, I think that reduces our, our cost. Um, the discussions we've always had, we've, I've always heard, you know, it would be nice if we could do a one-stop uh, city hall for services. So I, I think the consolidation effort is still there. Um, my biggest concern, or what, what I'm looking for is on all these scenarios, and you, you've kind of already pointed it out, is where, where and will phase two fit in for all the different scenarios? How many square feet we're going to need to consolidate all the services? And just kind of a ballpark cost of building phase two is important. Um, but I don't think at this point it's as necessary to have that to keep our current conversation moving. I, I, I don't mean to say I don't care about the cost. Yes, I care about the cost. But I think at this point, we need to stay focused on phase one more. Greg and then Claire. You know, I'm going to ask this question again because I've asked it before. And that is, you know, really at the end of the day, how are we going to pay for all of this? We, when I came on council four years ago, the price tag was $15 million. Then we went up to $17 million. And then a few months ago, we were in the 25 to $28 million range. And we had identified, you know, certain pieces of the budget that we were going to pull money from, both the CIP as well as, you know, the general fund, where we were going to piece some of this together to be able to pay for it and you know if, if we are going to look at those revenues plus the possibility of maybe a bond or some other kind of other funding mechanism if we have to go to the voters for a city hall dead in the water they won't buy it guarantee it I think that we need to be really clear in the information that I need to be help make me a decision on phase one, even out in the future of phase two, is where the revenue is going to come from, how do we pay for it. And I think that, you know, 
I, I appreciate this conversation because I've lived here for over 30 years now. And in the 30 years, I know that we have, uh, we have constantly, as communities, had conversations about revitalization of downtown, this, downtown, that, open up the streets, keep them closed, what investments. And we've made some significant investments and some forward progress in revitalizing our downtown. But I want us to keep this in mind. There are other issues out there that we have to be cognizant of. And some of those issues involve, you know, uh, other infrastructure needs in terms of pools, parks, other areas of the city that are underserved because we don't have the infrastructure there that we need to have. And that's what, you know, people talk to me about all the time. Fine, we like the idea of investing in downtown, but what about my neighborhood? Why, you know, we need to have, a, a, you know, more libraries, more pools, more, you know, community centers. And we're not going to get there unless we have even more forward-looking conversation discussions about how we look at the entire city in terms of our infrastructure. So, you know, I want to know how we're going to pay for it, where we're going to get the money, and then what are we not going to do or what are we going to delay and defer, you know, in order to get this done? Claire. So I um, tend to agree with Councilor Poling's perspective um, that, you know, we <coughs> recognize the feasibility of the phase two locations. Um, and I think tr trying to do any realistic costing at this point just seems unreal, d doesn't seem realistic. Um, but I appreciate Counsel Councilor Clark's comment that if in fact one of the options means it makes phase two more affordable, um, I think that needs to be taken into account in the analysis because otherwise we're ignoring an important piece of information. And that would hold true for any of the scenarios. Um, so just like we want to take into account the potential value of the sale of a piece of property should we switch with the county or uh, not put the city hall where we've currently designated it. You know, I would want that taken into account, but I'm not going to be looking for any kind of detailed costing on any of the phase two scenarios that we've put forward. So what did you hear? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I agree with what Claire said. I think a conversation about phase two should inform us but not um, drive us because we have too many unanswered questions about what phase two would be. We may change our mind about how big it should be or what it should involve or, or where, you know, there's a number of considerations about phase two. So what we can think about now in phase two to inform us would be helpful, but I'm not going to be governed by the phase two conversation. Um, and partly that's driven by, I'm glad those that were here talked about the previous city hall process um, because it was very clear in that process that whatever we came up with was just a pipe dream and was impossible to build. That you're right, if we went out for a bond to build a city hall, it was dead on arrival. And that did lead to the decision that we would pay for, for the city hall process in phases and with money that we saved ourselves. That's what the facility reserve was set up to do. Um, and it got $27 million in it at one point. And part of that money we used to pay for the new police headquarters and the 15 million that we have now is in part from that money. So it was kind of our commitment that if we wanted to have a city hall, we were gonna have to figure out a way to pay for it ourselves and that phasing and saving the money was the way to do it. And that's how we have arrived at today. So I think phasing is still the only way we're gonna get a city hall. And I think focusing on phase one is the only way to have this conversation about City Hall have any legs and keep moving forward, whether it's in any of those scenarios. And that includes EWEB, but it's got to be a primarily a phase one conversation because it, there ain't going to be any other conversation if we don't focus on that element and what we can come up to with the money to pay for it. I agree. Um, right now, if we really wanted to, if we had the will to do it, we've got in the neighborhood of $36 million that we could spend on phase one of City Hall. 
plus other monies that we could come up with. Um, we could use the money to build other things, but if you build a pool, you gotta have the ongoing money to run it. If you build a community center, you gotta have the ongoing money to run it. And I'm willing to have the conversation only if you also talk about how you run it, because that was the library conversation we had just two or three years ago, was how are we gonna pay to keep running those things? So I don't wanna get in that conversation, I wanna focus on City Hall. And right now, our City Hall commitment, as far as I'm concerned, from 2005, our commitment was, the only way we can do it is to do it in phases, and the only way we can do it is if we come up with the money ourselves. And I still think those two commitments are still valid because we can't bond the money to build it, and we can't build it all at once. So to me, that's, that's why I wanna be informed about phase two, but not driven by phase two. Because I'll, we'll get to phase two. If we have the land bank for it, that's the most important consideration. But I'll talk about phase two um, it, it, once we have more information about what phase two is even gonna look like. Mike. Um, I would only say, I have heard several of my colleagues now speaking in a fashion that leads me to think that they may not have any idea how or if we should have a phase two. I would suggest that without at least the discussion about very broad um, cost estimates, very broad and at least strategy elements to get there. If we don't have some manner of plan, if we can't compare the real savings one would get at a pre-existing set of square foot of EWIP versus how we pay for something brand new that is considerably larger, then it's, it would be my prediction that phase two just never happens. And there's no realistic plan to do it. So, then we have to have the question, or the, the, the conversation about what it costs us never to have a phase two. And to add that to the cost of not purchasing square footage to house that space. Thank you. So, um, and to wrap this up, I would just simply say that there was a time, maybe 40 years worth of time, when people said we would never get downtown yeah. back. And what it took was a determination to keep moving even when you hit bumps along the way. And that's the kind of determination I think this will take or any other good project you want to do will take. Nothing seems to come that easily. And in the context of City Hall conversation, um, you won't probably get to hear me talk about it. Well, maybe you'll get to hear me say it a few more times. Or I'm done. But uh, from, from my point of view, this is not about a building for city council. This is really about the people's place. It's where the policy and major decisions of our community get made and where our whole community is invited in to participate in that conversation. So when we, we make it small by talking sometimes the way we talk about it. We make it small in terms of its size. We make it small in terms of its importance. But I think it is profoundly important to a city where we regularly get over 100 people coming into a council meeting because everybody feels that our city council is a place where they can really discuss the important things of our city and express the views that they feel strongly about. And I just feel like I just want to uh, bring that back every time we have this discussion because I think it is it, it is really important, not to me or you, it is important to the whole city. And, I, I'm, and it's, worth, um, it's worth its struggle. So with that, are you? Yeah, yes. so what I, what I would take from this, and I would suggest not a vote on this, because I'm not sure how you'd vote. <laughs> not how you'd vote, but how we'd craft a motion. Uh, Chris, I, you said informed but not driven by phase two. So it feels like what we will what we will try to do is provide the information that informs your decision. So the the one that's most um, challenging a little bit is how we incorporate all of this into that eWeb conversation because that's a little bit different mm -hmm. sort of a scenario. And so we will do our best to ensure that uh, you're in, you have all the information you need on the scenarios with phase two without over analyzing phase two. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that looks like yet, but we'll work on 
I think we get the intent of what you're looking for, and we'll just try to figure out how to work that in. And if and as we come into uh, the fifth, uh, and we have more information, if that doesn't quite hit it right, then we can come back on the 12th or on the 14th to kind of take another round at it. So we can. Right. There's a little bit of time for that. It feels like there's there's costs of many kinds that need to be taken into consideration. Right. There's several moving pieces. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And we our intent will try to Star Trek three dimensional check. Yeah, try to <coughs> present it in a way that you can tease out what you need to tease out. Well, uh, yeah, speaking of costs, I, I think this, we were provided this information at one time, but I was searching for my papers and couldn't find it. Um, how much we're paying for rental space? Yeah, we have, we have that. that. Yeah. We will have okay. that. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I'd like to see that yeah. again. I think we. Yeah, so Friday, but it was a long time yeah. ago. And We're working on updating. Papers that got shuffled, and I couldn't find it. Yeah, if you're, there's so many moving pieces here. It's just, um, it's uh, brain numbing sometimes. <laughs> <if> you <laughs> just got to keep stepping uh, along. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, no, it's not impossible. It's complicated. Like it just quite yet. I know you want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, you really, really want to. Is you have so much energy. <laughs> the. Um, as you recall, before you click out, uh, one of the things I just wanted to bring up was the um, potential additions or, or postponements on your current tentative working agenda. So we don't have anything on your agenda before you go on break to talk about any of the sort of time, place, manner restrictions that you might want to consider placing on uh, <coughs> recreational marijuana uh, facilities. If you wanted to do that in a way that would go into effect before uh, the first of the year, you would need to, Glenn will have to jump in here, but you would have to have kind of the work session, <coughs> public hearing, and take action unanimously at a meeting before you go on break. So that would be something that you would need to do probably um, either on Monday, November 28th, or December 12th. So we wanted to just kind of get that out there so you're thinking about it. And then the second one is the South Willamette work session on the 14th that they've asked to postpone. So we. Uh, we have a motion for that, and I just wanted to um, put it out there that somebody might want to um, do that one. Put that forward. If they want to postpone it, if, um, anybody have any objection to that? Postponing South, South, South yeah. it at the request from the neighborhood. Yep. Oh. They've asked for that, and so this would just postpone it to January, um, okay. and that would allow for you to have another 90-minute scenario. Selection. Everybody okay? Okay, put it out there. Our move to replace the deadlines identified in the October 10th motion regarding next steps on South Willamette. As follows, staff proposal will be due January 31st, 2017 with a council work session scheduled to follow, ideally in February. Second. Moved and seconded. Okay. All those in favor, please indicate. <coughs> Favor, none of opposition. That passes. Now, anybody have any feelings I, about it? You do. I do have one question in reference to marijuana. Um, is there a deadline that we absolutely have to have something in place if we want to put in uh, distance restrictions or hours restrictions? Uh, there's not a deadline when you have to put something in place, but there's a business that has contacted, I believe, Claire and it may be Mike. I can't remember who they mm -hmm. said. Um, where apparently if there isn't something in place by January 1, then they will uh, not be able to operate until something does go into place. And so if you want to do something, as, as Sarah was saying, the only way to do that, because we don't have, we can't follow the normal charter process of uh, having you direct us to prepare an ordinance, posting that on the web for a certain period of time, then having a public hearing, uh, the only way you can do that is if you unanimously agree that basically you're going to waive those parts of um, the charter that say you have to provide that kind of um, notice. Uh, and you can do that, but what we need you to do today is to, well, really two things. One is uh, to direct us to actually prepare an ordinance, um, and the other is if one of you or more than one of you is not willing to um, agree to waive those charter requirements, then there's no reason to direct us to prepare that ordinance because when it comes time for you to adopt it, 
You don't have to all vote in favor of the ordinance, but you all have to agree to vote on the ordinance. And so if one of you isn't going to be willing to do that, then don't direct us to prepare the ordinance and try to meet the January 1 deadline. I don't even know what we're talking about. Yeah. That's all I have. Um, I've got Claire, and then Mike, and then George. Yeah, so I apologize. I'm uh, caught a little flat-footed. I don't have access to my email. Um, but the um, situation is a currently licensed medical marijuana dispensary that's now doing retail under the current rules will no longer be able to do that under the new rules because a looking glass facility has been designated as an educational center that's within a, a certain distance of their shop. We could um, pass an ordinance that would basically, I believe, either grandfather them in or provide the allowance that they could remain given that they would meet certain criteria in terms of barriers between their shop and that facility, which is across River Road. Um, and that would allow them to continue under OLCC rules uh, that would be governing them starting January 1st. If we take no action, they will get out of the rules they're under now and be subject to the rules January 1st, and they will have to close. So this would just be for that one place? It, well, it would apply citywide, but the request has come from that one place. It's the only location I know of in town that's having that particular situation unless another counselor has been contacted. Um, but because of my being absent, um, you know, due to, to medical issues, I haven't been able to kind of work this question the way I'd hoped. Um, I'm not necessarily in favor of a bunch of time, place, and manner restrictions, but I do think this is a, a kind of critical one piece that we could consider. We have also gotten um, requests from shops to look at a thousand foot uh, distance between shops, which we don't currently have, um, and I think it would be of value for the council to have this discussion. January 1st is when the new rules go into effect, and a lot of folks, you know, um, investment and time may be thrown into chaos if we don't take action before then. And, and Chris, if you actually could, if you decided <laughs> to, you could um, say that this special ordinance actually does only apply to oh. this single business if you wanted. Okay. Um, and then you could deal with the broader question of other time, place, manner restrictions um, at another time if that's what you wanted to do. Okay, I've got Mike and then George and then um, Alan. I'm not exactly what, thank you, Mayor. I'm not exactly what you would call the city's biggest advocate for marijuana <laughs> shops, but I would say that um, this is about equal access and equal application of the law. In one case, um, the, the law applies with the medical marijuana shops that if a shop exists before a school gets there and a school comes in, they're grandfathered. They're, they're, not, within, they're, they don't, they're not subject to that thousand foot requirement because they were there first. But it's not the case with retail shops, don't I have that correct? And so they now all have to go there and, and the law isn't written the way that covers them, the way that if they came in, I knew I was gonna confuse that as I went. You're right. And I think the clarification and what people have been talking about at the um, public hearing is under the medical rules, there were distances from schools. Right. There were also distances from shops. And when the recreational rules go into a place in January, they, um, the medical shops can sell recreationally and new recreational shops can locate without that same thousand foot rule. And so some cities and locations and what people have been asking you to do is put into place some time, place, manner restrictions that would continue to have those thousand foot buffers. This one's a little bit different, but I think it's, they're both I mean, yeah. in the same. To, to finish it, I can't explain it as clearly as our assistant city manager just did or that I would want to, but from my perspective, it was about equal application of law. And and so I, I would like to move on that, unless Claire wants to make that motion to follow through on the work she's already been doing, and I'll second it. Well, let's, let, let's hear from George um, Brown and Alan, and then we'll do 
decide what you want to do. Okay, well, let's go over this one more time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> new, no, I'm, I'm not quite clear on it. So the new regulations take uh, go into effect January 1st. The, the school came second. The, the pot shop was already there. Is that correct? The medical? Correct. All right. And, and is that for any medical facility gets to stay if the school, because it's probably going to happen again. There'll be some kind of edu educational uh, entity will open up within a thousand feet of a marijuana, you know, outlet. So George, my understanding is this is um, a somewhat of a unique situation just because of the timing of when the new rules are going to into effect. So either somebody has a problem today or they'll, you know, if they open up in the next several weeks, then maybe they would have this same problem or they're never going to have this problem because it's just the, the oddity of when the new ro rules go into effect and sort of how they, the medical marijuana rules and the recreational rules sort of dovetail off each other. Um, and that's why I say if you wanted to, um, since you only have one business that has asked you for this exception, which basically says it's okay for a facility, if you decide there's a topographical or physical or geographical feature that separates um, the facility from the, quote, school, then you can authorize them to be less than 1,000 feet as long as they're more than 500 feet. So you won't have this issue next year. Um, because new rules will go into effect. This is just uh, related to this one business. Okay, but we could have the same situation could pop up next year the way I'm understanding it right now in that if some other educational entity wanted to open up within a thousand feet of an existing marijuana dealer, do they have to close them? The people that are there because they're within a thousand feet of I, I don't think so. I'm not as familiar with those rules, but the, the exception there, when the legislature changed some of the laws as they've been trying to tinker with them to deal with some of the unintended consequences, mm -hmm. they added a provision um, that basically you can use now, but after January 1, it becomes moot. And that provision is the one that says, okay, you can allow a business um, right now to basically, you know, you can say, because of those topographical, geographical features, it's okay for the business to remain operational even though it's less than 1,000 feet from the, quote, school. Okay. The new retail has a grandfather clause. The old medical doesn't have a grandfather clause. So they have to relicense and they can't. George, are you finished? Yes. Thank you. Alan? So does this uh, school exist now or is it proposed? It exists now. It's a. It's actually not a school. It's a. Do you know, Claire? It's a looking glass. It's not a, it's not a school. Road. It's a. It's looking glass. What? If I can answer. Yes. So it's a looking glass facility that serves youth, and the Definitely. Oregon Health Authority or OLCC, whoever determines, looked at it and decided that it qualifies as an educational facility. It's. It's not a traditional school. Well, it's been there forever. And. <laughs> Oh, that's the looking glass thing. Is that Station 7? No. No, no it's one, one on River, river Road. Road. River, oh, river Road downways. Yeah. Stepping stone. And so how close is it? It's across Close. the four lanes of River Road. It's like a mile and a half if you're trying to get across. The middle of the it's day. more than 500 feet. It's less than 1,000. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, the rules around this are changing all the time. But I guess after January 1, though, the rules will be known and anybody moving around uh, we'll know what the rules are, and so you should know what the rules are. But in the interim, we've got some problems to deal with. Um, I guess I don't necessarily have a problem with this one uh, because it's so limited and, and it's such an odd case that uh, if we could craft it so that it's very narrow, we can't actually say the, the name of the business, can we? Uh, and the school. And I the, believe that the city of Benita, which did something similar, may have said it. But it will be crafted so it would only apply on River Road between certain addresses. Between it will be narrow enough that it won't apply to anybody else. That, that, that works. That works. Wouldn't it be because there might be another facility out there that's not aware of the rule change? Can't we just craft it so it says any 
exempt any yeah. establishment that was in place prior to a certain date is exempt? Not under this provision because the only way you can authorize this facility is if you make a determination that the geographical or topographical or physical features um, actually provide basically an alternative to the thousand foot separation. So if um, you had school here, open field, same side of the street, um, the facility, I'd be telling you there's no way you can legally make the determination that topographical or geographical features separate it. So it's really difficult, especially in the time that we have, for me to try to craft what those characteristics would be. If there were others that came before you, you could say, oh, okay, well, let's take a look at a map and figure out whether something um, is similar and then you <coughs> add it at the time that you're approving the ordinance. And then, am I hearing people objecting to going ahead and, and adding the the thousand foot uh, rule for all facilities in? I don't know yet. Yeah, I'm not prepared to do that now. That's so, not part of this conversation, though, right? That's a different conversation. Yeah, that can be a separate conversation, and that you have time to do after the first of the year. So, before Claire, I'd let her put a motion out or whatever she wants to do with this. Um, I believe Claire's motion would be I move to direct the city manager to um, <laughs> prepare an ordinance. Well Thank you. Um, to bring back to council before council goes on break that would um, exempt um, the business on River Road from the provisions related to no the thousand foot buffer. I just wanted because your your first question was we don't want to do this if if anybody's going to um, hold it up so to speak they, we're not going to agree to let it move forward for a vote. That would be my preference because I'd rather not spend the time drafting. I'm looking around the room. Anybody, Anybody object? Okay, then I think you're. Yeah, so I appreciate the conversation and the concern about other businesses that might be caught unawares, but I think they've all been notified, and yeah. I think this business was notified, and that's why they reached out kind of in a panic. Um, <laughs> so um, I'll try to remember what Glenn was saying. So Just moved. say, oh. yeah. move what Glenn said. So moved for uh, the city attorney. Second. Moved and seconded. Okay, all those in favor, please indicate. Eight in favor, none in opposition. Okay. Just so you know that, uh, Mayor, before you do that, just so you know, it will not be on the 28th. Um, it will be on the 12th. 12th. Okay. Jerry, got anything else? Nope. Thank okay, you. then. Okay. There we go. <laughs>